A hotly discussed and requested topic is what software should structural engineers know? We use software day in, day out to design safely, efficiently, and effectively. So it is important that you understand how to analyze a structure and what software you have available to you. However, the specific software is not as important as knowing which software to use for what purposes. So I'll be going through the different type of software that we have available to us as structural engineers, giving you the examples that I use day in, day out that I would recommend, but also going through some modeling tips so they make sure that you're using the right software for the right situation. So you're not overcomplicating a design or simplifying it too much. My name's Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. So let's go through where we would start to analyze a building. And there's a basic acronym that will help you in this stage. And this is G-L-A-D. So G is for geometry. What are you trying to frame up? What is the physical geometry of what you're trying to analyze? L is for loads. So of course, what loading is on the structure? So what forces do you need to resist? A is for the analysis. So what type of analysis that you need to run on? So how do you get the loads out of the design? And D is for design. So how are we going to design the structures for the loads? Analyzing of structures requires you to click that like button. Not only does it help me out, but also gets this content out to more people. When we're first starting out, we want to try and keep things simple and build up on those more complex designs. So when we're looking at a building, we're starting with the most simplest procedure first, which would normally be a hand computation. Because if you don't know where you're trying to go or roughly what the answer should be, how can you trust the analysis that you put out? You don't want to treat the software as a black box where it spits out the right answer, as you may have put something incorrectly into the analysis. So garbage in would equal garbage out. So this is where we would start off with some sort of hand computation, but you can make it more dynamic. So you're not just always doing hand computations all the time. So you've got two ways of doing this. You've either got the Excel spreadsheet, so where you've validated how the analysis goes through. However, I would recommend something more dynamic, something like MathCAD. So what MathCAD allows you to do, you can see you've got a full worked example. You can see where the parameters are going through and how they flew through and what is calculated. Where something like Excel will hide those cells, you need to drill down on the analysis. So it's more like a hand computation, but as it's dynamic, you can change the values in here and get out the same value down the bottom. So you can spend a little bit more time to make it look presentable, but also means that you can quickly iterate and validate to make sure this analysis is correct. So MathCAD would be used for your first pass of analysis. So doing your preliminary hand checks of earthquake loads, wind loads. You'd also be going through other things such as load rundowns. It's, it's quite easy to do a quick tributary load rundown. So just by putting a ruler onto a bit of paper, measuring a length and getting a tributary area and doing a quick load rundown. This is where it will shine. Or for example, if you've just got a one-off analysis, so you just need to design one little portion. So you've got a wall junction connection or those odd connections where you may not have a standalone piece of software. So you can piece it together to analyze simple elements. Where Excel comes into the game is when you start to analyze a bit bigger structures. So you've got say bulk data that's coming in and bulk processing. So if you're trying to process the analysis, you could use Excel as a stepping point. However, I would recommend that you quickly step up to something more like Python or a programming language in this situation. Yes, Excel is a good way to prototype and design, However, if you can power it with something like a programming language, you will be more efficient. Now I do have videos on this and you'll find them in the below description. If you don't wanna take the time to write and validate either standalone Excel or MathCAD sheets, there's a software called Structural Toolkit that will do it for you. So they've already taken the effort of writing these standalone assessments and giving you the tools to do it from day one. So as you can see, we've got many examples of different types of elements that we can design that they're providing assessments for. If we're moving into more complex geometry that may have X, Y, and Z coordinates, this is where you move into a frame assessment such as SkySiv or SpaceGas. They allow you to analyze the structures for the loads that are going to be in them for either reinforced concrete or steel frame structures. So it allows you to have a full 3D frame of the building. Typically, I will start off with a simple frame, so it might be just columns and a single beam on top, so only in the X and Y coordinates, then move into the 3D frames later after analyzing in that simple format. Now, sometimes those big bulky 3D structures can be quite complex to debug and work out if there's any errors or where the errors lie. Another benefit of using a program either like SkySave or SpaceGas, it allows you to simplify the stability elements that are gonna be in your building. So if you need to scheme a building quickly, it may be easy to scheme it in something like SpaceGas or SkySave 
or if you need to validate a 3D model that you have in either a program that I'll mention later. Another program that I also throw into this group, although it only does 2D analysis, is a program called Wrapped, as it allows you to do a detailed assessment of reinforced concrete structures. So whether you've got either a continuous or multi-span beam or slab, it allows you to do a reinforced concrete or post-tension design. Now this is useful, especially when you're doing a more complex assessment in programs that I'll mention later, to help you build up from that simple assessment into the more complex analysis. If we move up in complexity of analysis, we'll move into something like either a SAP or a strand seven. So this allows you to do a detailed FE analysis of how you can assess the loads of flowing through a structure or a single element connection, as you can take section cuts and get the forces flowing through the analysis. These also shine in such elements where you need to analyze the motor response of the structure. So just say you've got a laboratory floor and the complexities of the vibrations is highly critical to make sure the laboratory equipment works. This is where you would use a software such as SAP or Strand 7 to analyze how the structure is going to move under those conditions. Other areas where this shines is if you've got a complex transfer. So if you've got a big transfer structure with loads coming down, so you've got complex forces for strut and tie assessment, this is where software such as SAP or Strand 7 will really come into its own. Yes, you could do it for those more simple frame assessments. However, it is built more for that complex assessment. So sometimes it may be a little cumbersome for doing those more simple assessments. Another type of software that you need to know is something like a more complex slab FE assessment. So if we're going back to our GLAD assessment, so we've got a geometry, we've got a complex slab arrangement. So yes, we did semi-analyze it in something like wrap, but we had to really simplify it to get the answer out. So in these situations is where you use something like slabs or RAM concept, as it allows you to do the full FE slab arrangement to analyze every portions and analyze it exactly how it's going to be built. So you don't need to oversimplify certain areas. Yes, when I'm starting these type of assessments, I do start with that more simple assessment and build up to this complex arrangement. As this does two things, not only does it allow me to model the structure quicker, as I know what type of post tensioning I'll need, how many strands and in what locations, but also allows me to compare that more complex assessment to the simple assessment to see whether I've either made a mistake in the more complex analysis or whether I've oversimplified the wrap model as they should be somewhat in alignment after the final assessment is done. This more complex 3D arrangement also allows you to analyze the structure for the diaphragm forces. So when you've got a lateral event, either a wind or an earthquake, the slab needs to transfer the loads back to the central supporting elements. So there will be strut and tie actions. And by applying lateral forces on the slab, you're able to see how the loads are flowing through the structure. Another type of software that I recommend is more of that full 3D lateral assessment. And this is something like an ETABS, which I use day in, day out. I use it because of how easy it is and the fact that you can plug into other APIs to drag geometry out of elements. So what this allows you to do is simply analyze the structure for the lateral assessment. So modeling in the cores, the walls and the floors and assessing it for both earthquake and wind lateral forces. The beauty of a software such as ETABS and why I recommend it is the ease that you can put that geometry in and get the analysis out. So whether you want the software to analyze the structure fully and go all the way to design, or you can pull just the lateral forces out and analyze it somewhere outside the system. There's two more types of software that I recommend that every engineer should pick up. The first one is more of a utility, and this is like a programming language. So you can either do this through VBA, plugging in through Excel, or more of a standalone assessment such as Python. So what this allows you to do is get data out of different analysis. So this allows you to link up different types of analysis, allowing you to port from both the analysis through the design and back into the modeling assessments. So cutting out some of that middleman and cutting out some of those copy and paste areas, both speed up the marking up and the design and documentation of the drawings and also helps with your QA. Of course, when you are using something like this where it's going all the way through there, I would recommend that you locally check some areas to make sure what you've put in hasn't been garbage to make sure they align with your hand assessment. The other type of software is more of that documentation site as everything we produce as engineers needs to be documented to allow people to build it. So there's many types of software that fill this gap. So if you're going into the 3D modeling space, this is where you're going to Revit or you can go into AutoCAD or BricsCAD You've got that more of that 2D documentation or even Bluebeam. Bluebeam is highly powerful. You're able to document a pretty good set of structural documentations 
all the way through Bluebeam. As you can see, there's a variety of different types of software that you can pick up as an engineer, but they specifically fall in those different groups. And please comment below if I've missed anything. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, I've got links to my Patreon in the below description, much like these many members over here. Without their support, this type of content would not be possible. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and see you next week. Bye.